Hello and welcome to CSC 411 Intro to Artificial Intelligence. My name is Dr. Adam Gawita. I'm an assistant teaching professor here at NC State University and welcome to my course. Uh, so one of the things I'd like to at least do, especially you know in this first video, is introduce you to who I am because you're going to be seeing my bobbing head uh, quite a lot. Uh, so you know it's kind of nice to know who I am a little bit. Uh, and then what to expect in this course, because obviously, again, this is for NC State University. Uh, so again, there's a grade attached to it and assignments attached to this. So kind of important to know what you're getting into. So uh, again, if we're kind of looking at it, like I said, my name is Adam Gawita. Uh, and so my research over the years has spanned a number of different sort of areas uh, when we're looking at artificial intelligence. So if we kind of take a look at the top here, you know, uh, uh, this is me and my masters uh, in the good old days when my hair, you know, the Bieber look was popular. Uh, now it's whatever. Um, but as you can sort of see, I've got a bunch of lines and they're a little blue sort of dots sort of all over my face. And well, those dots are what we called landmark points. And the entire idea is if I had say 100 or 200 of those landmark points, I could draw out a mapping of the human face. And well, you know, again, I'm uh, just one person, but we could build a statistical model off of sort of people sharing my demographic. So if we found a bunch of other 20-something uh, uh, white males, uh, well, we could get them together and say, oh, well, you know, this is what the average Caucasian 20-year-old male is going to look like. And we could do the same thing with, uh, you know, African-American males or Asian females, all these different kind of groups, but specifically in that idea of also uh, different age ranges as well. Again, I was in my uh, 20s in this picture, but if we did it, say, for example, with people in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, well, as you can see, we can produce sort of average models of that face across now time. I could take, say, for example, my 20-something-year-old uh, face and then say, well, based on how you look and based on your demographics, if we make some artificial intelligence, uh, we can make estimations of what you're going to look like in your 80s. Now I look like Avatar. Uh, either way, you know, is this true? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm reaching my 40s now. Uh, so this is, you know, it's kind of right, maybe. I don't know. I, I have, I've had a beard for a while. Either way, as you can see, sort of, uh, you know, again, looking into uh, artificial face aging for uh, human trafficking or catching uh, high value targets for the Department of Defense. Uh, after sort of my master's, I went into the startup life uh, and I worked for a company known as E2 America. Uh, unfortunately, the company, as startup life happens, uh, went under. Um, but, you know, what we did was we focused on... Uh, using statistical analysis to try and predict when quick service restaurant HVAC systems or fast food chain air conditioners for you know, layman terms, based on how they perform and how quickly they can cool down a zone, uh, well, can we look at that and then say, oh, you know, hey, your performance is declining because based on our model, you know, you're not cooling as fast as you used to. And this might help uh, before you you know, your system breaks and customers get mad and want refunds and things like that. Uh, but as you can clearly see, I'm here uh, at NC State now. So my research actually now has focused in on sort of computer science education. I really like this world, uh, especially since we have, again, a number of different practice exercises that we do in computer science to help learn this world. Uh, and as you can sort of see from sort of this uh, wild and crazy graph here, uh, one of the things I'm looking at is studying the relationship between all those different exercises. Uh, because, well, if you're struggling with, say, for example, the good old coding exercise, which we uh, have seen students will struggle with them, uh, typically through syntax errors or logic errors, whatever. 
oh, well, you know, if you're struggling with that world, maybe one way to help teach it is to give you something like an output prediction, which has a little less, uh, you know, problem solving aspects to there. You're still having to code trace, still having to work through the code, but you're not having to like think up problems. Maybe this is uh, 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 something that will help kind of get you over that, that edge and then you're able to work on the coding problem. But what happens if you're still struggling there? Well, maybe what we can do is we can give you a typing exercise something super low level, here's a picture of code, retype it, maybe that works. Uh, but one of the things that I'm looking at is again, how do these different activities relate to each other? And again, like I've said, uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, from what we've seen from students, you only pick one activity at a time. So can we say, for example, build a system that will build out a, a tailored training regimen for you? You know, do this activity, then this one, and then this, etc. That's sort of where my research kind of now is. Uh, but again, okay, my world of AI. You want to know about the course. Again, what is this course going to be about? So again, uh, we're going to be focusing on Moodle. Again, this is a course at NC State. There's materials, there's assignments, there's all the lecture slides here. You know, all that will be hosted on Moodle. Uh, as you can clearly see from a bobbing head video on YouTube, I will be recording little 10 minute block videos uh, about the topics we cover in class, uploading them to YouTube. Uh, but we also have sort of uh, the lecture recordings. We're gonna be working off of Panopto for that. And again, uh, you know, go access that. That is the actual lectures as they're happening in the classroom. Uh, there is going to be a live stream of that material as well. So make sure if you can't come to class for whatever reason, you know, you still have access to, again, the lectures. Uh, finally, uh, we're going to be working off of Piazza. There are two sections of this uh, this semester. And so you're both going to be running into the same problems. You know, you're going to be struggling when we get into like the A star algorithm. And so you may run into problems and I might be gone or not able to respond. There's other classmates who are also struggling. And so, you know, reach out, you know, use this as a Q&A forum that you can kind of have some uh, insights on. We are going to have some office hours. We're going to do Monday, uh, Wednesday from 2 to 3 via Zoom. There's a, a calendar uh, to block out your appointments. Please use that. Uh, that's just going to help me, you know, make sure that enough people can work uh, or have access to me at uh, any given time. Um, we are going to have an optional, optional textbook. Uh, so we're working off of the Artificial Intelligence, a Modern Approach uh, textbook by Stuart Russell and Peter Norvig. Uh, again, it's optional. Uh, if you do choose to uh, purchase it. You know, fourth edition's fine. Third edition's fine. International edition's fine. Finding uh, uh, something on the internet is fine. I didn't say that. Um, the big thing is, again, uh, we're not, you know, I'm not giving you assignments that are straight out of the textbook and, you know, oh, go do this. But the algorithms haven't changed. Something like a neural network, right? That was invented in the 1960s. Addition isn't going to change how that algorithm was built, but it's still good to you know have these as a point of reference because again, they are trying to help teach that stuff out. You know, pricing is uh, its own little thing. Find it on the internet. I didn't say anything. Moving on. So if we're looking at this again as a course, uh, there is a grading breakdown. So you know, at least to start from the bottom. Uh, Obviously, there's going to be a final exam that's going to cover everything at the end of the semester. Uh, but we also have two midterms as well. So the first midterm will be in about four weeks. Uh, again, it'll cover everything that we've talked about up to that point. Then we'll have another one about four weeks later. Uh, and then again, the final exam will be at the end of the semester, roughly four weeks later. So at least the important part and 50% of the grade kind of is coming down to these two activities. So if 
we think about what I said during my introduction. I'm really interested in lower level practice to help students learn computer science. And that's exactly what these lecture exercises are meant to do. The entire idea is these are going to be on Moodle and uh, they're going to be just things that you can access. You can complete them literally as many times as you like. I don't care. Uh, the entire, entire purpose of them is think of them like practice. You know, if you're uh, into physical sports or uh, you know, I don't know, maybe video games or music or something like that, again, you don't just get better by doing something once. It's through the repetition uh, that you start to build up that muscle memory and that becomes much more familiar to you. Same kind of things going on here. These lecture exercises are, again, meant to give you just a little bit of practice in those activities. And this is literally a sneak peek into your first lecture exercise. Uh, and the entire idea here is, well, given a uh, simple reflex agent, as you can see, you know, it's literally just uh, a nested if statement. Given this logic, what does the agent do? Working through this, because again, uh, we're going to be working off of something known as time steps, which we'll talk about. Again, this helps frame your mind. Big thing here is Pretty much once they're released, they are going to be due one week later, unless otherwise noted, uh, before the first lecture. So if an activity is released literally uh, at the first day of class, uh, it'll be due in a week right before that class starts. Again, these are just meant to give you practice. Again, you can complete them as many times as you want, but again, they are only 10% uh, of that 50 we were looking at. Well, that's where, obviously, the problems, the problem sets, there we are, uh, are going to be the big, bulky kind of points of this semester. And we're going to be working off of two separate programming languages. Java, because again, here at NC State, we are a Java workhorse, but also we're going to explore the idea of using Prolog. It's a little more, uh, it's not as well represented in like industry, but it is a great modeling language, especially when we get into natural language processing, or in our case, working off of knowledge representation. But one of the big things, again, as you can clearly see, is uh, you're going to be working off of giant projects and just to give you a sneak peek at one. Uh, so for example, this is literally problem set one, build an agent uh, that given some environment, does an action literally build a simple reflex agent and well you know we'll have a video fully on this uh a little more to explain everything you have a way to visualize this uh, and so if i run this you're seeing it's crashing right now because again the problem set that you are going to be doing is implement it have this agent clean the floor of dirt a lot of dirt going on there right now it's again just crashing because it you know you haven't implemented the algorithm and whatnot but again have fun last little part that we'll talk about is obviously the you know academic integrity violations uh don't cheat uh you know i'm i'm a huge proponent of and you know, we'll talk about it but i'm a huge proponent of you know working and helping each other but obviously do not copy someone's work uh go on the internet don't use chat gpt uh because again you're trying to build these things don't have them build it for you uh the mindset that i work off of is what if you choose to then go build uh life support software i want to make sure you know uh how to work. I don't want you cheating your way through and then scrambling to figure that out because if I ever find myself on life support, I want to trust that you knew what you were doing. Uh, to kind of add a little bit more uh, of a, a bite to this, it's not that you just get a zero, uh, but if you do get caught, uh, again, what we're going to be giving you is a negative 100 for that assignment, that exam, whatever you get caught cheating on. So don't don't okay well i i did sort of mention i i'm i'm interested in you helping each other so the way i look at this is again we know that this is something called social learning theory 
This is how we learn is by sharing. I've been doing this for decades, right? Uh, so I'm old. My jokes are bad. I don't know what TikTok is, right? You may have just figured this stuff out. You may understand something a little bit better or may be able to explain it to your peer who is conveniently you know, struggling with it and you may be able to help them. I'm perfectly fine with you working and helping each other out in that context. You know, Can you look at their code? Yes, don't give them your code. Don't tell them what you did and they do exactly that. But again, you know, look at their code, help them out. The best way I like to think about it, you know, if you're trying to figure out this, this weird gray area of am I cheating or not cheating? If you've already, you know, passed all of the test cases, you are confident that you're going to be getting a, a, your 100 uh, on a problem set, then be more than willing to help out with a student. Um, if you're still struggling on your end, don't help a student. Again, because you're still trying to figure it out on your end. Um, again, we're doing our best here, you know. Um, the assignments are meant to be interesting, so hopefully you're you're excited about them and you're not trying to find uh, ways to cheat through them. I I know I've seen my gradient. I I know that you know you'll be okay. Uh, if you put into the work, yeah. If you put in the work, I assure you that you will understand the material and be able to solve these things without too much problem. So again, welcome to CSE four eleven. My name's Adam Guida, and let's get started.